Okay, now uh, let's start the class now. Okay. Um, so we stop at 2.2, the derivative function. So somehow, the limits that we have learned uh, in the previous class, last, uh, last week, um, is uh, related to the, der the derivative functions. Okay? So that is the reason why we learned about uh, the limits, the second line and the tangent line. Okay, so the definitions of the derivative functions is given by uh, this formula. Okay, so the derivative at x specific point x naught is given by this formula. Okay, the limit h tends to zero f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught divided by h. Okay, so this is actually the second definitions of the uh, of the slope for the um, slope of the tangent line at a specific point at not okay the second definitions for the first definition we can write as uh, the limit x tends to x not f of x minus f of, of x not sorry f of x not Okay. Uh, divide by x minus x naught. So this is the second definition. Okay, we, you can use either one of these. Okay, um and then that is for specific point x naught, okay. But if uh, we are taken uh, for any uh, general points x instead of x naught, uh, the derivative functions is uh, given by f prime of x is equal to the limit of f x plus h minus f x divided by h, h tends to zero okay so this is for any specific point x instead of x not x not is one um one point okay and this x not sorry this x is for the general values of x okay so let's look at uh, example one find the derivative with respect to x of fx equal to x squared and use it to find the equation of the tangent line okay at x equal to two okay if you remember from from your at max you know that uh, you have uh you have what uh you have power rules okay the power rule says if you have y equal to x to the power of n the derivative of y with respect to x will be n multiply with x to the power of n minus 1. So this is what you have learned. So from, uh, from these uh, power rules, you know that uh, for f is equal to x squared, your f prime of x will be 2x. Okay, I'm sure you have uh, memorized this well. But um, today we have uh, to do, uh, we have to find the derivative of f with respect to x by using its definitions. And its definitions is, of course, based on this formula here formula of uh, formula one in, in equation one. Okay? So f prime of x is given by the limit fx plus h minus fx divided by h as h tends to zero. And your fx is equal to x squared. Okay. So of course your fx plus h will be equal to h plus h squared. Okay. And then you minus with fx, you get x squared. And then you uh, expand this, x plus h squared, you get x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x squared. And then you can cancel out those that can be cancelled out. 
okay, which in this case it is x, uh, x squared, okay, and uh, from here obviously you can cancel out the denominator. So obviously the end result is we have to cancel out the denominator because if not then you will have trouble. Uh, what sort of problem that I'm talking about is the denominator will be zero because the h will tend to zero. Okay, so it means that uh, you somehow get undefined, undefined uh, result. Okay, so you better make sure that your denominator can be cancelled out. Okay, in this case, somehow it can be cancelled out. So 2x plus h. And then you substitute h tends to zero, then you get to x, which is obviously equal to the result when we get from the uh, power rules that you have learned during your uh, uh, SPM, I mean additional mathematics, okay? And then the, the questions actually ask you for the slope of the, sorry, with that. Let's look at the questions again. The questions ask you to find the equation of the tangent line, okay, at x equal to 2, okay? So the slope of the tangent line at x equal to 2 is f prime of 2 is equal to 4. So x here is for the general x. If we want it specifically for x equal to 2, then you just have to substitute, okay? So f prime of x is equal to 2x. It makes f prime of 2 is equal to 4. You just have to substitute here x equal to 2, okay? And since y is equal to 4, if x equal to 2, it means that the point slope form of the tangent line. So this is actually from the equation of the line straight lines. So y minus y naught is equal to uh, the slope of the derivative, okay, uh, m multiply with x minus x naught, okay. Your y here is, sorry, your y naught here is equal to 4. This is your y naught, okay. And your x naught obviously is it's x naught. Oh, sorry, your x not here is obviously equal to 2. So you substitute x not equal to 2 and the y not equal to 4. And then you get this equation, this line equation. And you simplify this and make y as the subject, subject of the denomin sorry, the subject of the equations. So you get y equal to 4x minus 4. So this is how you get the uh, the equation of the uh, tangent line. Okay. So it varies somehow. Uh, the slope, so this is uh, the, the graph of y equal to x squared. At specific point x equal to 2, the slope of the tangent line is equal to 4. But if, you, if the questions ask you for the slope at here, maybe at x equal to 3, then uh, the slope of the tangent line will somewhat be different, okay? Uh, for the obvious uh, example, if you look at the slope for x equal to 2 and x equal to negative 2, uh, for, for x equal to 2, the slope is positive, which is positive 4. But for x equal to negative 2, the slope of the tangent line will be negative 4. So this is not the only uh, uh, difference. Uh, it, it, it will differ. The, the slope of the the slope of the tangent line will be differ at each of the point at each of these points here. It will be different from each other. Okay. Uh, I hope it is clear. So any questions? Do you have any questions? No. Okay, good. Um, let's look at example two. Find the derivative with respect to x of fx equal to x cubed minus x. So for what 
for f equal to x cubed minus x uh, from your general, I mean, your general knowledge, you already know that your f prime is equal to 3x squared minus 1. So this is also from the power rules. But how do you get uh, to these expressions is obviously from the definitions of this uh, derivative. So f prime of x is equal to the limit h tends to zero, fx plus h minus f of x, okay? Your fx is equal to x cubed minus x. So for f of x plus h, it will be x plus h cubed minus x plus h, and then you, minus with fx, which is in this case, it is x cubed minus x. And then obviously you have to, um, you have to, uh, uh, you have to simplify this. You have to expand before you can simplify, okay? And those that can be canceled out, you have to cancel out, okay? In this case, it's good that uh, the denominator can also be cancelled out because uh, all the expressions contain h. So you, you can cancel out with our denominator. Okay. And then you let h tends to zero. It will give you 3x squared minus one. Okay. That's it. I think you have to do lots of exercises. Um, so let's keep that. And then we somehow uh, come again to the instantaneous velocity. For the instantaneous velocity, they're just the same like before. Okay. Like if you have instantaneous velocity, it means that it, it contains the limits. If you have uh, average velocity, then it doesn't contain the limit. That's it. Uh, like in this case, the questions ask you find velocity functions. Somehow, instantaneous velocity functions, more simply the velocity functions. It means that we somehow can also denote the instantaneous velocity functions as just velocity functions. So if the questions ask you for the velocity functions, it means they are referring to these instantaneous velocity functions that contains the limit expressions, okay? And then uh, let's look at this uh, interesting example six. The, the example six is for the functions fx equal to the absolute value of x. Okay. Uh, and then uh, somehow uh, uh, you notice that it, it does have a corner. Okay. So before that, um, we have to know that not all functions are differentiable, okay? Um, and we can actually note that the functions uh, is not differentiable based on the behavior of the graph, okay? If you look at here, this graph is somehow has a corner point. So, it, um, so these functions here might be differentiable everywhere except at this specific point it's not it is differentiable here it is differentiable here it is differentiable everywhere else but not at this corner point okay so it means that the functions fail to be differentiable at one point it's not and then it's also for the point of vertical tangency okay the point it's not here is the point of vertical tangency. If you look at here, if you try to draw the tangent line, it will uh, looks like a vertical line, okay? And we know that at this specific point, x not, the function f fail to be differentiable. So it is differentiable here, if it is differentiable over here, it is differentiable everywhere else except at this point of vertical tangency. So you have to be careful with these two, two points. One is corner point and another one is point of vertical tangency. So as for that, 
if you look at uh, the absolute value of x, you know that actually there's one point, it's a corner point. So you know by heart that the x naught here, which is equal to zero, so x naught is equal to zero, is the point where the function of f fail to be differentiable. It is differentiable over here, it is differentiable over here. It's differentiable everywhere else except at one specific point, which is at the corner point. X not equal to zero, okay? Um, so the this is what you know, but the questions actually ask you for the proof. The questions, ask you for the proof that fx equal to the absolute value of x is not differentiable, okay, at x equal to zero by showing that the limit of in definition 2.2, point two does not exist at x equal to zero. So what does it mean by the limit does not exist? The limit does not exist if it, it is equal to infinity or the limit from the left and from the right, they are not the same. Okay, so based on that definition, so we are we, we want to show that uh, the the x equal to zero does uh, possess uh, that problem. Okay. Uh, okay, so um, let's look at this. Um, so f prime of zero, f prime of zero, we know that from the definitions, it is given by this equation, f of zero plus h minus f of zero divided by h. Okay, and then f of h, f of h is equal to the absolute value of h, okay? Because f of x is equal to absolute value of x, okay? And then f of zero is absolute value of zero, and then you divide with h. Absolute value of zero, you know that it is equal to zero, okay? What is left is just absolute value of h, and then you divide by, with h, and if you, if you uh, divide into two parts, one is h is uh, greater than zero, and another one is h uh, less than zero. So this indicates the directions from where the x is coming from, okay? Uh, so if it's coming from the right, the h will be greater than zero. If h is less than zero, then it's coming from the left hand side. Okay, so the absolute value of h, uh, it is equal to one if it's coming from the right. And it is coming, if it is coming from the left, it will be equal to negative one. Okay, so the limit h tends to zero negative will be negative one. And the limit h tends to zero positive is equal to one, okay? And both of them, they are not equal. One is positive, another one is negative. So uh, uh, does uh, the limit exist? The limit of uh, the limit of this one, of the whole things here, we denote as star, the limit of star as h tends to zero exists. No, because the limit from zero negative and zero positive, they are not the same, okay? Does not exist. Okay, so this uh, proof that the, uh, that the function fx equal to absolute value of x is not differentiable at x equal to zero. Your friend here is keep on messaging me, like uh, saying that, uh, is it uh, possible if I can um, 
join your class because somehow I'm afraid that uh, I will disturb your class. But if you keep on messaging me that, then you should know that you also um, disturb my class. So just keep quiet and wait for the recording video. That's it. Okay, please think before you do any actions. Um, okay. Um, okay, now uh, let's look at the second one. Find a formula for f prime of x. Okay. So, so the questions ask you for the formula of f prime of x. Okay, we can uh, see that from the graph here, this is actually the graph of y equal to x. Uh, segregately, uh, one part is denoted for y equal to x, but another part, which is the left-hand side, is for y equal to negative of x. Okay, we somehow can um, subdivide y equal to absolute value of x into two parts. One is uh, the positive side, another one is negative side, okay? Okay, so, uh, and we know that this is the definitions of the derivative. So it means that for the positive side, f prime of x will be one. And for the negative, uh, uh, negative side, the left hand side, the left hand side, it will be negative one. So this is for x greater than zero, and this is for x less than uh, less than zero. Okay, so f prime is equal to one for the right hand side, and it is equal to negative one here. This is negative one. This is one. Um, negative one for the left hand side. Okay. Okay, now let's continue with the next uh, chapter, sorry, um, subsection, which is uh, introduction to the technique of uh, different sessions. Okay. Um, for the derivative of the constant, um, obviously, it's also from the our rules, if you have a constant c, it is actually c multiplied with x to the power of zero. Is it? What happened? We cannot equal to all. Okay, so it doesn't apply from the power rule. So we, we cannot use power rules. The power rule doesn't act on n n equal to zero. It is only for n greater than one. Uh, and maybe for the negative side as well. Um, but then for constants, the derivative of any constant uh, is equal to zero. So f prime of x is equal to the limit h tends to zero, f x plus h minus f of x divided by h. So this is by definition. Um, and then um, if you have fx equal to c, so your fx plus h will be equal to c, okay? Will be equal to c as well. So c minus c and then you divide by h, okay, the answer will be zero, okay? So from this uh, statement here, from this definition, uh, you know that the derivative of any constant function is zero, regardless the value of c. Doesn't matter what value of c is taken. Okay? Uh, so, so that's it for the constant function. What about the power functions? Okay? If you have power function, 
this is for the power functions. This is the formula that, that you already know uh, from school. And then, um, obviously, this formula here is obtained from the from this limit definitions. Okay, somehow the limits definitions is given by this. Okay, which is equal to n x to the power of n minus one. Okay, if you derive uh, this uh, formula here you somehow get an x to the power of n minus 1, okay? And then it doesn't stop at any positive integer only. So this is for positive integer. It doesn't stop at positive integer only. It also holds for any real number, for any real number r. So it means that if you have a y equal to x to the power of 0 0.5, so your y prime is also, um, is also obtained from this formula, which is 0 0.5 multiply with x, multiply with negative 0 0.5, okay? Uh, because uh, this r here is not only for integers, but also for any real number, okay? And then for the derivative of a constant times of functions, okay, you're some, you are somehow uh, can um, take this constant out from this uh, derivative, okay. Uh, and obviously, um, it's obtained from this formula, this limit formula. Okay, the end result somehow shows that the C can be taken out, taken out from this, uh, from this uh, parts here. So here, C multiply with F prime of X, which is equal to this side here, which is equal to this side, D, D, X multi uh, of C, F, C multiply with F. Okay. And then for the sum and difference, you can also segregate, segregate each of the terms. So the derivative of f plus g is equal to the derivative of f plus the derivative of g. And then for the der difference, it is derivative of f multiply with, sorry, minus uh, g it, uh, is equal to the derivative of f minus the derivative of g, okay? Uh, let's look at this example. How, how are you going to solve uh, this, uh, this expression, the derivative of these expressions? If, uh, you, if you, you are still not sure about, about this uh, caution, caution expressions, what are you going to do? Okay. The first thing that you have to uh, to do for this kind of expressions is you simplify so that it doesn't contain the uh, this de denominator. Okay, it doesn't in terms of uh, caution, caution functions. Okay, so d dx uh, one because you can cancel out square root of x with square root of x. Okay, it is equal to one minus 2x div divided by square root of x is 2 multiplied with uh, square root of x, okay? They are, they are the same. And this is just a uh, difference, difference expressions, okay? I 
I think this is somehow uh, somewhat that you have learned during your additional mathematics, so I don't have to repeat much. Um, what about example seven? Example seven asks you for any points, if any, at, at what points, if any, does the graph y equal to x cubed minus 3x plus 4 have a horizontal tangent line? Okay, so by definitions, we know that horizontal tangent line is obtained when the slope of the tangent line is equal to zero. This is what you, you already know. So if you look at the graph, it will be zero at these two specific points. Okay, one is x equal to somewhere here, and then one is somewhere here. Okay. Uh, but then uh, you know that the derivative of x cubed minus 3x plus 4 is given by 3x squared minus 3. Okay, this is from the power rules. Okay, then you equate this equal to 0. 3x squared minus 3 is equal to 0. Minus uh, equal to 0. So... Uh, you you get what you get a three x squared minus one equal to zero and then x squared minus one you can uh, factorize it so that it is x minus one and another one is x plus one so the x will be one is negative one another one is one so is that somehow tally with the uh, with the graph with the graph of the function okay so if the questions ask you for the points so when when we talk about points it doesn't only contains uh, the x coordinates it also have to uh, have uh, the y coordinates so uh, what will be the um, the coordinate of y whenever you have x equal to 1, okay? So 1 uh, cubed minus 1 multiply with uh, this 3 here, so 3, and then plus 4, okay? And then what will be the answer? So the answer will be somehow equal to 6. So the, the, the coordinates of this point will be 1, 6, okay? One six, sorry, negative one six, and this point as well. You you have to calculate the coordinate of y at the specific point x equal to one. Okay. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, next we go to the product of product and quotient rule. Uh, somehow if for the if for the uh, summation and difference, we can somehow can uh, segregate uh, the expressions uh, for the derivative. It doesn't hold for the product and quotients. Uh, for the product and quotients functions, we have uh, to deal with uh, different formula. One is the product rules. Okay. Another one is quotient rule. Okay, if you have the product of f and g, the derivative of f multiplied with g will be f dg dx plus g df dx, okay? So, in other words, if you have f equal to u multiplied with v, your f prime will be u prime v plus v prime u. So, this is another another way on expressing these product rules. Maybe you are more familiar with this uh, formula than the one in equation one here. So you can remember or memorize either one of these. Okay, so u prime v plus v prime u. Okay. And then uh, for the caution rule, and of course uh, we, we got these product rules from the definition from this definition, okay? 
Uh, and then for the derivative of caution, uh, derivative of caution, uh, it is uh, it is given by equation two, or specifically if you already know in terms of u and v, then uh, maybe we can write here. So f is equal to u divided by v, then f prime will be u prime v minus v prime u divided by v squared. Okay, so this is the formula. This is the same formula as in equation two. Okay. And obviously it is, it comes from this uh, limit, limit uh, expressions on or the uh, derivative uh, formula. Okay. The derivative of uh, uh, definitions in terms of limit. Uh, okay, then uh, let's look at example three. Okay, could you please uh, try to do it uh, in like five minutes and see if you can get um, the answer for this expression. Y equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 1 divided by x plus h, sorry, x plus 5. Okay, uh, the questions ask us to find y prime, and obviously you have to use question rule. Could you please do it for five minutes? I'm working here. I'm giving you five minutes. Okay. Let me know if you have problems. I'm letting you to do it yourself because uh, I, I think you already know this uh, from your additional mathematics. Please mute your, your microphones because they will be in my recorded video. Hi.
okay huh? you have any problems related to example three any problems no okay good uh so let's proceed i think we can skip all the examples uh i think you can do this at home it's just referring to the formula the product rules and the quotient rule okay and then uh, let's go to the derivative of trigonometric functions for the derivative of the trigonometric fun functions uh, there's a uh, two two formula which is interesting, which are interesting. One is sine h divided by h. Why it says that this is equal to one is because it's from the L'Hopital rule, okay? If not, then it should be from zero, it will, it should be zero divided by zero. If you substitute h equal to zero, then it will be zero divided by zero. But then, uh, since it is zero over zero or infinity over infinity, you can use L'Hopital rule. It means that our limit sine h divided by h, h tends to zero, uh, is equal to the limit h tends to zero for the derivative of the numerator, which is cos h. You divide with the derivative of denominator, which is one. Okay, and then you substitute h tends to zero in here, then you get one. Okay, so that's the reason why you got one. It's also applied for the second expression, which is one minus cos h divided by h. If you substitute, then you will get one minus one divided by zero. So zero divided by zero. Okay, from here you apply L'Hopital rule as well. And the answer will be uh, zero. Okay. Uh, And then, uh, if you ask to, you are asked to find the derivative of sine x. I'm sure you already know that f prime of uh, if f x equal to sine x, then f prime of x is equal to cos x. Okay. But how do you get this? Is it's also come from uh, these limits. Uh, limits definitions okay uh, the answer will be cos x f prime of x will be equal to cos x and then uh, if you have fx uh, fx equal to cos x then f prime of x will be equal to negative sine x okay And then if the questions uh, is y equal to x sine x, then the questions ask you to find this dy dx. You know that this, con this uh, is a product, product um, of u equal to x and v equal to sine x. So straight away you can use product rules. So it means that your y prime will be u prime v plus v prime u. Okay, so your u is x. So it means that one, v is sine x, plus v prime is cos x, and then u is equal to x. Okay, so this will be the answer. Sine x plus x cos x. Okay. And then uh, for the example two, you have quotient. Uh, sine x divided by 1 plus cos x. So your u is uh, sine x and your v is 1 plus x. Okay, so your y prime will be what? 
your y prime based on the quotient rule it is u prime v minus v prime u divided by uh, v squared okay And then uh, for other trigonometric functions, so like you, you already know the derivative for y equal to sine x and y equal to cos x. But what about other trigonometric functions? Like y equal to tangent x, uh, y equal to let's say uh, secant x, y equal to cotangent x and y equal to uh, cosecant, cosecant of x, cosecant of x. All this trigonometric formula is somehow uh, the combinations of trigonometric functions uh, sine x and cos x. You express uh, the y equal to tangent x in terms of sine and cos first. And after that, you apply either uh, quotient rule or product rules in getting the y prime. Okay. Uh, in this case, the tangent of x is equal to sine x divided by cos x. So this is in terms of quotients. Okay. So it means that you can apply quotient rule. So the u here is sine x the v is cos x okay and then you apply quotient rule uh, u prime v uh, minus v prime u divide by v squared and somehow the end answer will be secant squared x so the derivative of tangent is equal to secant squared x so you don't have to remember all these trigon uh, sorry the derivative of all other trigonometric functions except for a uh, sine x and cos x because the other trigonometric functions can be derived okay or can be expressed uh, expressed by sine and cos and uh, after you express uh, the trigonometric functions in terms of sine and cos you can somehow uh, get the derivative of f by using either quotient rule or product rule, okay? And then uh, there's another rule that uh, we can, uh, that is related to the, pro sorry, that is related to the derivative, which is chain rule, okay? Uh, so the chain rule is given by dy dx equal to dy du multiply with du dx. It doesn't stop at uh, two variables only. It may continue. So let's say it can be dy dx equal to dy du multiply with, let's say, du dw and then multiply with dw dv and then uh, maybe after that dv dr but then the uh, the final expressions must be dr dr dx okay so if you notice uh, this du can be cancelled out and then dw here as well can be cancelled out uh, this d dr sorry this is dv dv can be cancelled out as well and the last one the dr can be cancelled out so what is left is just dy and dx, okay? So dy dx is equal to all this uh, chain rule, okay? Okay, let's look at example one. Find dy dx if y equal to cos of x cubed, okay? You already know the derivative of y of y equal to cos x, the derivative is y prime equal to negative sine x. Okay, so this is what you know. Okay. Uh,
But then uh, the questions here is not just cos x, but it is cos x cubed. Okay, so it means that you have to apply chain rule in order to get y prime. Okay, so the y here is equal to cos, let's say you denote it as u, where your u is equal to x, uh, x cubed. Okay, so from here, the questions is obviously ask you for dy, dy dx, okay, which is y equal to cos x cubed. Okay, so the dy dx is equal to uh, dy du multiply with uh, du dx. Okay, so dy du here you differentiate y with respect to u from here you got dy du equal to you differentiate cos u with respect to u then obviously you you get negative sign negative sign u so this is negative sign u and then du dx you differentiate u with respect to x okay so du dx, you differentiate u with respect to x, you get 3x squared. Okay, so 3x squared. And then uh, this is the answer, but somehow it still uh, contains the variable u. We want everything in terms of, we want everything in terms of x. Okay, so the answer will be negative 3x squared sine sin x cubed okay because the u here is x cubed that's it that is the final answer negative 3 x squared multiply with sin x cubed okay and you can try example 2 at home it's just uh, the same uh, the same way that is by using chain rule uh, because here our our w is what our w of t is actually equal to the tangent of four four t q plus t okay so what well, what is w prime t so this is what the questions ask you what is w prime prime t okay. let's try to do it at home okay um what else that you have That's it. That's it for chapter two. We finish it. So let's have like 10 minutes break before we continue with the topics of different sessions. If you have any questions, uh, you can ask me now. Okay. Any questions? No? Okay. Let's have no. 10 minutes. Okay. Muhammad Irfanuddin, any question? No? No, madam. No, no, no. No, no, okay, okay, good. Um, okay, uh, we will start again at 11.55.
Okay, uh, let's continue with uh, with chapter three topics in uh, different sessions. Uh, for the implicit different sessions, um, so if you have uh, equations like in equation one here, you notes that y x plus y plus one is equal to x. It may be difficult for you to express y as the subject of the equations, uh, so that you you can find uh, y prime y prime of x. Okay. So um, so for this case, in order to make y as the subject, you have to factorize y. So y x plus one is equal to x. Sorry, y x plus one is equal to x minus one. Okay, so for y as the subject, you get x minus one divided by x plus one. So from here, if the questions ask you to find y prime of x, it's not difficult for you to get. Uh, the derivative of these uh, expressions uh, because uh, you can just apply caution rule. Okay, so this will be your u and uh, the denominator will be your v. So y prime will be just u prime v minus v prime u divided by uh, v squared. Okay, but it may be difficult if it contains, let's say, trigonometric functions. So let's say you have uh, like uh, sine y multiply with x and then uh, plus y uh, and then plus 1 equal to x. Then for this case, it's almost impossible for you to write the y as the subject of the equations. So what you have to do in order to get y prime is to apply implicit differentiations. You cannot make y as the subject anymore, okay? So the only result uh, is to use uh, implicit, implicit differentiations, okay? So let's learn about implicit. Okay, uh, let's look at this uh, equation here, x, y equal to one, okay? If you try to express y as the subject, then you can write here y equal to 1 over x, okay? So dy dx, this is obviously x to the power of negative 1, so you apply a power rules and you get negative 1 divided by uh, x squared from the power rules, okay? But then, without having to write y as the subject, you can also apply implicit implicit differentiations in order to get dy dx for the implicit differentiations you have to apply d dx on both sides of the equation the left hand side as well as the right hand side so d dx of x multiply with y equal to d dx of one okay and here it is x multiply with y, okay? So it means that you have to use product rules. So your product rules will be u prime uh, v plus v prime u, okay? So x, y. So if, if you have x, y, then uh, your u will be x and the y will be v. So u prime v plus v prime, v prime u, okay? So x, uh, x multiply with y. So in this case here, I think, uh, I think instead of write u prime v plus v prime u, in this case, it is actually v prime u plus u prime v. It's just the same. It's just that we write uh, the second expressions as the first one. v prime u plus 
u prime v. So your v prime, your v prime is y, okay? Uh, your u is x. So that's why here you have you have to write x and then you multiply with dy dx, okay? Uh, and then plus u prime v. So u prime, you differentiate uh, x with respect to x, then you get 1. So dx dx, and then for v, v is equal to y. So y multiply with dx dx. Okay, so dx dx is obviously equal to 1. Okay, it's just a constant 1. And then for this one, it stays as dy dx. So x multiply with dy dx plus y is equal to d, d dx for 1. 1 is just a constant. Any derivative for a constant function will be equal to 0. So the right-hand side will be 0. And then our, the questions is obviously asking for dy dx. So you have to make dy dx as the subject. So dy dx is equal to negative y divided by x. So this is the answer. Okay. Uh, and, and in this expression here, it still contains a y. It still contains y. It's best if we can make everything in terms of x. Okay, we can get rid of y. Okay, so y is 1 over x. Okay, so negative 1 divided by x multiply with 1 over x. Okay, so the answer will be, uh, sorry, yes, this negative. Uh, the answer will be what? Negative 1 over x, key, x squared. Okay, so this is the answer. Okay, in terms of x, in, th in terms of only x instead of y. Okay, uh, next one, example two, use implicit differentiations to find dy dx if 5y squared plus sine y equal to x squared. So in this case, it's totally impossible for you to make y as the subject because it contains trigonometric function. And here, it's constant uh, a squared, I mean, a polynomial uh, expressions, okay? So in a... Uh, in order to use uh, implicit, uh, you have to apply a different sessions. Uh, you have to differentiate both sides. You differentiate everything, both sides, with respect to x. So d dx uh, of 5y squared plus sine y. And for the right-hand side, d dx x squared. Okay? 5 d dx y squared plus d dx of sine y. And this part here, d dx of x squared is equal to 2x, okay? And then uh, for this part here, 5 is just a constant, so it stays as 5. You differentiate y squared in terms of x, so it will be 2y, and then you write down dy dx, okay? Uh, and this part here, this is also expressions in terms of y. So you differentiate respect to x, you get uh, cos x, sorry, so cos y, and then you write down here dy dx. For the right hand side, this is already in terms of uh, x. So you differentiate with respect to x. Oh, sorry, this is not without this. This is from here. You differentiate x squared, then you get to x. Okay? And then to simplify this. Can you please mute your microphone? Okay, uh, and then you simplify this, you get 10y dy dx plus cos y. Uh, here dy dx equal to 2x, okay? I think uh, the final answer should be expressing dy dx as the subject, okay? So the dy dx 
is equal to 2x divided by uh, 10y plus cos y. Okay. I think that's it. It's not difficult for you to apply implicit rules. Sorry, implicit differentiations. But then you have to be careful if you differentiate with respect to x and the variable is in terms of y, you have to write here the dy dx after you differentiate. So 2y dy dx, okay? But it doesn't apply for the variable which is uh, in terms of x. This one, you can just write the 2, 2x because um, our dx dx is already equal to 1. Okay, our dx dx is already equal to 1. The original one is 2x multiply with dx dx. But then since our dx dx is equal to 1, then you don't have to write uh, the, this dx dx. But then for dy dx, it will stay. We, we cannot cancel out the dy dx. Okay, so that's the reason why the dy dx stays, but the dx dx doesn't. Um, and then what else? I think you can try to do all the other exercises. Uh, this is just to find the slope. When we talk about slope of the tangent line, it's somehow deal with the derivative. You know the, what is the definitions of the derivative, right? The derivative it is somehow equal to the limit of the expressions and the limit of the expression is somehow related to the slope of the tangent lines. Okay. Okay, uh, next we go to the derivative of logarithmic functions. Uh, the derivative of ln of x, so ln of x Okay, ln of x is uh, is a log of x but with the base e. So e here is a constant. If you press your calculator, it is 2.71 something. Okay, so uh, for the ln of x, the derivative of this uh, ln of x, d dx, ln of x, is equal to is equal to one over x, okay? and uh, this is somehow uh, learned during your additional mathematics subject. Uh, but then uh, you obviously get this formula is from the definitions of the limit, okay? From this uh, from these uh, expressions here. Okay, you get 1 over x. Okay, uh, and then what?
that is for loan of x but for the for the general log of x with the base b for any uh, values of b the formula is given by this 1 over x ln b so uh, the formula is 1 over x ln b 1 over x ln b okay but then as uh, for b equal to e uh for b equal to e, this is for the case of y equal to ln of x, okay? So this one here, f prime of x here, is equal to 1 over x ln e. But then ln e is known as 1, so that's why we get 1 over x for the derivative of f, okay? For y equal to ln x okay but then this is for the general the general formula for logarithmic function of x uh, with base b okay uh, let's look at this example one uh, for b, does the graph of y equal to ln x, so this is the graph of ln x, have horizontal tangent line. Horizontal tangent line means that it's like this one. Is it, po or in other words, is it possible for y prime to be equal to zero? Okay. Uh, is it possible for y prime to be equal to zero? so that it can have horizontal tangent line, okay? Is it possible? This is ln of x, ln of x for y equal to ln of x. You know that uh, y prime is equal to one over x, okay? In other words, is it possible possible for you to have 1 over x equal to 0. It's not possible. There's no values of n, sorry, of x that will make 1 over x equal to 0, isn't it? It may be approaching 0 for a very big, uh, sorry, for... For a very big number x, it may be approaching zero, but it doesn't really equal to zero. It is not possible for any value of x in such a way that one over x is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, so for these uh, questions here, does the graph of y have any horizontal tangent lines? Then the answer is. No, no, okay? And then what about example two? Example two, we have d dx ln x squared plus one. Can you suggest any, any way on how to solve this problem? What, what method that you have to apply? You, you cannot solve it uh, straight away because you don't know the derivative of ln x squared plus one. You only know the derivative of ln x. And you, of course, know the derivative of x squared plus 1. So you have to apply chain rule, okay? By expressing that u is equal to x squared plus 1, okay? So if you express u as x squared plus 1, then the y will be equal to ln u, okay? And then uh, your... Your questions ask you for dy dx, dy dx. So uh, the dy dx is equal to du, dy du multiply with uh, du dx, okay? So the dy du is equal to one over u, okay? The dy du is equal to one over u. And for the du dx, 
it is equal to uh, 2x. Then you substitute it uh, in this equation here and you get the answer as 2x multiply with 1 over u. And 1 over u, uh, you have to change this so that it is in terms of x instead of u. Okay? The final answer should be everything in terms of x in, instead of containing a uh, variable u. Okay? Let's try to do all the examples at home. Okay, next one. Exponential and inverse trigonometric functions. Exponential. <sighs> okay, um, so this is exponential. Okay, exponential. So before that, uh, I'm not sure if you're already familiar with this E. So this E here is, uh, is a constant. It's just a constant. 2.71 something. You can check with the calculator. And it doesn't, it doesn't really um, express the, the U here. It doesn't stand for exponent. I'm afraid that you might uh, be confused that the E stands for exponent. No. E in this case is, uh, is referring to Euler. Okay. Euler is a mathematician, okay, uh, which discovered this constant, and uh, he note that this constant is somehow very useful, useful in studying trigonometry, in studying complex number, and everything, okay. And uh, he think that the this constant two point seven one something here. Uh, it's so useful that it, it's appeared a lot in calculations that he might need to use uh, use uh, an alphabet uh, to define this constant. And somehow he chose E from his name, Euler, not from exponent. Okay, but exponent is actually um, any uh, is sorry, it's um, it's a function in terms of let's say y equal to ax, a to the power of x for any values of a, for any values of a. Sorry, in this case, somehow they use u, uh, sorry, b. So y equal to, I can just erase this. Uh, Uh, b to the power of x because uh, here it used b. Uh, so so this b here, so this is exponent functions. So this b here can take any any number. It can take uh, one, it can take two, it can take three, it can take any any um, any number. So let's say um, let's say two point seven one. Okay, but but uh, since Y equal to, oh, I think this is correct. Okay, um, the derivative of b to the power of x for, for this exponent function is given by b to the power of x ln b. Okay? And then uh, for the special case where we have uh, b equal to e, okay, for b equal to e, we note that the ln b here will be 1. So that's why the derivative of the exponent 
will be itself because ln e will be equal to one. So that's why we got we got this famous at a uh, formula, which is the derivative of ln e. Sorry, exponent of e. Sorry, not exponent. This is e to the power of x. Uh, is equal to e to the power of x. Okay. For example three, uh, the derivative of two to the power of x. So in this case, what is your b? Your b here is equal to two. So just substitute uh, this formula, this formula five, okay? So two to the power of x ln two, two to the power of x ln, ln two, okay? And then what about this one? e to the power of negative two x. It will be itself. Because in this case, how, how are you going to solve this? So d dx, d dx for e negative 2x. I think you have to apply chain rule here. Um, so let's denote this as what? As e to the power of u. Okay. d dx e to the power of u. Where your u is equal to negative to x okay so if you have y equal to e to the power of u then the dy dx the dy dx from the chain rule uh, will be equal to dy du okay multiply with uh, du dx dy du multiply with dy dx so dy du it will be itself you differentiate y with respect to u so you can write it as eu and what about this one du with respect to x so the answer will be negative negative 2 Okay, so write everything in terms of x. We don't want it to still be in terms of u. So negative 2 e to the power of negative 2x. Okay. Uh, for the third one, e to the power of x to the power of 3. So this one also, you can you can apply chain rule. Uh, for the fourth one as well, this one also will deal with chain rule, where your u will be cos x. Okay? I think I, I can leave it uh, for you to do it at home. Do you have any problem with that? No? Any problem? No. If I leave it no. to do it at home? Okay, good. If, if, you, if you think that uh, what we have learned uh, today is difficult, then please let me know because I personally think that this is just a revision. Okay? I think that's it. You want to stop now or want me to, to, to continue? Okay. I think let's stop now. Uh, or if you want it, or want, want me to continue, then let's have, let's say, another five minutes break before we can continue.
Do you want me to continue or do you want me to stop here? What do you think? Bergantung, Madam. Ikut Madam. Okay. Uh, so you, Madam? <laughs> I, I think I you follow you, Madam. Let's have five minutes break, okay? Let's have a five minutes break.
Okay, let's look at uh, this inverse trigonometric functions. Okay. Uh, so this inverse are trigonometric functions. We start with uh, arc sine. Okay, arc sine. A R C arc. Arc sine of x. So sine of uh, sine of x, if we denote that equal to uh, sine of x, if we denote that equal to y, so it make that x is equal to sine y. Okay, it make x as equal to sine y. Okay, and then you, you use uh, implicit, implicit differentiations. So for the implicit differentiation, you have to differentiate both sides, isn't it? So you differentiate both sides with respect to x, you get d dx uh, of x and then d dx of sine y. Okay, for the left hand side, you will get one. For the right hand side, you will get cos y and then you write down dy dx okay so as uh as the subject of the equation our dy dx will be equal to one over cos y and then obviously y here is equal to at sine of at sine of x okay at sine of x Okay, uh, so at this point, uh, we actually uh, have uh, the expressions of dy dx, but somehow uh, we want it to make it uh, more simpler. Okay, um, we, we don't want it uh, in terms of cos and then the cos of sine of x. Um, is it possible for us to write it in terms of uh, something which doesn't contain, let's say, the trigonometric functions anymore? Yes, consider. Sorry. Okay, uh, and then... Um, and then uh, here... You have uh, dy dx equal to one over square root of x. Uh, sorry, sorry, square root of one minus x squared. How do we get this? So if you look at here, it looks like this. Uh, this. Uh, at sine of x is the is the theta, isn't it? The cos of at sine of x. It means that our theta is equal to at sine at sine of x. Okay. And then uh, we try to uh, draw. A triangle from uh, this theta here. So our theta is at sine of x. Our theta is at sine of x. Okay. But then how do we get x here? Wait, eh? mm. okay. Uh, we have what we have formula for the triangle, uh, which is so sine of theta, sine of theta is equal to so opposite divide by hypotenuse okay you have so
So opposite divided by hypotenuse. So from this, okay, if you if if you take a sign for this uh, expressions here, it will be sine of at sine of x. So you will get x, isn't it? You will get x. Sine of theta. Sine of theta. Where your theta is this one. So sine of at sine of x. It will give you what? It will give you x, isn't it? So it will give you x. So this is theta. Uh, so x here is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So let's, uh, x is also equal to x divided by 1. x divided by 1 is equal to x, isn't it? So it means that your opposite will be equal to x and your hypotenuse is equal to 1. So that is how you get this triangle. x here and 1 here. And for this part here, this, this is called adjacent. For this adjacent, it's obviously from the hyper, uh, sorry, from the Pythagoras theorems. Okay, so Pythagoras theorem says that adjacent uh, squared plus opposite squared will be equal to hypotenuse squared, isn't it? So it means that your adjacent squared will be equal to hypotenuse uh, squared minus opposite squared, which is in this case, it is 1 minus x squared. And then you take the square root uh, for the adjacent, only for the adjacent, because this is for the adjacent squared. So that is the reason why the adjacent takes the value square root of 1 minus x squared. And then uh, for the dy dx, in order to write it in terms of a much simpler form than before, you know that uh, the theta is at sine of x. The dy dx is 1 over cos theta. So the cos, uh, it is from what? Cos theta, the formula for the cos theta is ka. Ka, isn't it? Ka. A, A divided by H. You have these three formulas. So, Kahtua, I'm not sure if you still uh, uh, still remember this. But cos theta, A divided by hypotenuse. Okay? So, for this case, your adjacent is square root of square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay? Uh, so it will be 1 divided by square root of 1 minus x squared. The hypotenuse is equal to 1. So that's why you got this. That's why you got this formula. Okay. Is it okay? Or is it difficult for you to understand? Okay, so that's settled for, uh, for our sign. For the art course, you can still do it uh, the same way as before, but maybe you will end up with different triangle. Okay? You will end up with different triangle. So that is how you derive. Uh, derive the formula for the derivative of art sign. And you can continue for art course as well. Okay? Uh, but somehow in this... Uh, formula here, it lists down all the, the derivative of the inverse trigonometric functions. Okay? I think that's it. It's not difficult. Uh, what about example 5? Example 5 is the combinations of uh, inverse trigonometric function at sine and also x cubed. So it means that for this case, you have to apply chain rule. Okay, chain rule. 
So y equal to a sine of x, the dy dx. So this is what you already know. Uh, sorry, I think maybe you can use a uh, different uh, notation. Uh, instead of x, let's uh, write u. So y equal to sine u. So dy du is equal to, sorry, at sine. So in this case, it is not the original sine, but instead it is inverse. Inverse trigonometric functions. At sine of u, so like before, the formula is 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared. 1 over square root of 1 minus u squared. So this is the formula uh, for the derivative of y for y equal to a sine of u. And then uh, the questions ask you for y equal to a sine of x cubed. So if you denotes y equal to a sine of u, so it means that your u here is equal to x cubed. x cubed, isn't it? So your answer for the dy dx, okay, so your answer for the dy dx will be equal to uh, dy du I it's not somehow not responding. I somehow cannot write on the screen. Uh, but if we proceed, it will be dy dx equal to dy du multiply with du dx. Your du dx is from this one, from this equation here, it will be 3x squared. And your dy du will be this one. So that's why you have here this and 3x squared. Obviously, after your, you change everything, the u here in terms of x. Okay, you change u here in terms of x, uh, x cubed. Okay, because the u is x cubed. I think that's it. Uh, for b, it's the same like before. This also use general where your u is e to the power of x. Okay, I think that's it. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and we will see you again next week. Okay, for next week, uh, we will continue with the related rates. Okay, I cannot write it on this uh, on this uh, screen. Okay, that, that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Let's end this session here. I somehow cannot ca cannot uh, click any button or whatsoever. I think it's better if you end or you exit the uh, I mean our our meeting window. I cannot. I think the only way is to to shut down my computer. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. 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 See you next week, doctor.
Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. 